we certainly felt when, when Donegal had a seven point lead they, they, they got a couple of soft ones maybe from Michael Deegan to help Mayo back into the game but you know it swings yeah. and rounds about yeah. So it was still tight enough then going into the final quarter and Donegal kind of pushed on a bit I, I felt they did the, the, this is the point I was making a little bit earlier that yeah. I, I never had a sense that they were really threatening it they got it to three but it was beginning to be moved out to four again and it was just that nice control play. This is one of the best points. Lovely interchange. McGlynn to Gallagher. Tap over. Mm. You know, simple, uncontested points. And we, we, we made reference to, to, to Michael Murphy. Like, these were crucial. It's interesting that last, last year, Cluxton wins the All-Ireland with a free. You know, Cork win the All-Ireland two, mm. two previous uh, with Goulding. You know, that's another magnificent effort by, mm. by, by Murphy. Then uh, O'Shea. And O'Shea is thrown in at full forward. It seems to be... A plan A for the last 10 minutes. I thought it was a little bit unsophisticated, I have to say. Especially with, there's Murphy actually back, just tapping it down to one of his own defenders. There's so many Donegal players that something uh, as rough as that, you know, you, you have to have a little bit more nuance to, to your yeah. attack to try but, and break it down. Although, it's not reasonable to throw Aidan O'Shea in if you're being forced to kick from so far out and it's not happening. Oh, indeed, but you'll notice a lot of the balls that are coming in are coming right down the middle. I mean, yeah. if you're going to do that, at least be diagonal yeah. and try and get mismatches. But, like, everybody congregating yeah, into it's the... Not, don't, it's not going to yeah. work against yeah. Donegal, Donegal. The way Donegal play, play. all they do is need, need players up. and they're allowed time to get Murphy and yeah. Neil Gallagher back in there. But I think, come down, we look at it, comes down to the free kicks was a big thing. Murphy, or Murphy's kicks under pressure yeah. when Donegal need them great scores and Colin McFadden's kick and free taking is very very important in the modern day game and again today it shows and, and pro probably yeah. just a, a final point on, on all the tactical sides of it the matchups were key uh, you know Kevin Kane matching up with, with, with Michael Murphy uh, Carl Lacey matching up with Alan Dillon uh, and everybody knew this coming into the game, that the management would have to think long yeah. and hard. Who, how, how, who are they going to sacrifice? You know, I thought maybe Keith Higgins might go up. But they settled for what they settled for. But you'd have to say now, uh, in, uh, on reflection, that Donegal actually got the greater dividend from their matchups. That Lacey's one worked out beautifully for them. And early on, for 20 minutes, three, two goals and one magnificent goal chance for the mismatch. Uh, well, it wasn't a mismatch. Yeah. That's a bit harsh. Well, Lacey, Lacey yeah. picked him but up in the league game in, Bal or in Ballyshannon and did really well on him as well. Now, mm. Lacey won in the battle, especially early on. You see, the score, important scores of Donegal, Lacey was involved in them all. Yeah. I think the Murphy won, Donegal won that battle because they expected, Mayo, I think, expected Murphy to play out the field and Kevin Keane would follow him out the field and they left him inside and that, that was right. the difference. All right, we'll, we'll have lots more chat on this, obviously, and we'll be hearing again from the victorious Burlington Hotel. But first, let's spare a thought for poor old Mayo, who put up such a brave battle today. This was the reaction of their manager, James Horan. James, hard luck today. I know you've come from a, a very disappointed dressing room. Did you feel like you were still right in it right up until the end? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, with 10 minutes to go, it was, it was, still, it was still there for us if we, we just show maybe a bit more composure. But um, look at it, we give, you know... We give seven points away at the start of the game against, uh, you know, um, in an All-Ireland final against a team like Donegal. It's very, very hard to come back from that. Um, but we, we kept plugging away. We, we, we kept at it. We kept going. The guys kept trying. And, uh, you know, with a bit of luck maybe there at the end, we could have been there or thereabouts. But uh, look, at you know, Donegal deserved their victory and, and uh, good luck to them. Yeah, because you did seem to recover from that early blow. You brought it down to three points at one stage. Yeah, the second quarter we played, we played very, very well. And, uh, you know, at the start of the second half, we, we had a few balls, but some of our basic skills let us down. Uh, first touch wasn't what it needs to be on our final day. And, um, you know, the ball was hopping off us a little bit and that was giving Donegal momentum and, and they were counter-attacking. So we were putting ourselves under pressure. So, you know, it was some simple stuff that, that cost us really today because um, that game was there first, but we, we, we just couldn't, uh, couldn't get ahead and couldn't take it. You took a lot of people by surprise this year with your performances and with your march to the All-Ireland final. I would presume that you won't be taking too many people by surprise next year. Oh, look, you know, we, we took people by surprise last year as well. Um, so, uh, look, we keep doing our stuff. You know, we got to the league final, we got to, we got to the All-Ireland final. And, you know, this team is improving all the time. It, it, it certainly is. And we know, you know, today those hard lessons for us. Some of the simple and basic fundamentals of the game weren't, weren't as good as they need to be. So, um, we'll... we'll, we'll um, Take it on the chin and we'll, uh, we'll head away and we'll, we'll think about those over the winter. All right, Kieran, reaction from a Mayo point of view? Yeah, I think, Des, listen, it's, it's tough for Mayo tonight, you know, they, they, to lose an All-Ireland final. It's, it's gut-wrenching, I'm sure, for them. Uh, but I, I think there is hope there, you know. If you put aside that 
bad start. They did compete well. They never lay down. They showed a bit of character to get back in the game. You know, in terms of championship appearances, they've only half the amount of championship appearances under the belt that collectively that the Donegal team do. So James Horn has done a, has done a good mm -hmm. job with them. They are on an upward curve, and you know, if he can just get them to recover and still that bit of belief in them, that next time they're right back in Crow Park, they should they should should learn from today. And I, th I think there is a bit of hope for Mayo t yeah. tonight. You you know them as a group, Kevin. They will all sure. buy into another tough year. For oh, they will. Yeah, they're very young. If you look at their age, they're very young. It's key for them now. Absolutely key to do well in their province again next year and get back to Crow Park so, so you get a chance to use that experience. I, I have every hope that they will. They, they did a great job today in many respects other than the start okay. and they were chasing it and that's not a thing you like to be doing in, in a final. Of course, all right then. Now in direct contrast to that abject disappointment, let's go back to the Burlington Hotel and rejoin Michael Lester. Well, back here at the Burlington Hotel, I can tell you the victory banquet is in full swing. It's getting, it's getting louder and louder as the night goes on, and I'm sure that noise is not going to abate. I'm joined here now by two more heroes of this afternoon's win. I have with me Rory Cavanagh, their midfielder, and of course Colin McFadden, who scored one of those vital early goals today. Uh, Colin, like Rory beside you, the two of you have soldiered for quite a few years for Donegal, so this is extra special. Yeah, I suppose I've been the two have been playing for about 10 years each, and, you know, Finally, in the last two years, the success we had is just unbelievable. And we're totally grateful for Jim and Rory in the background team for giving us that opportunity. Speaking back, I think now that two years in, we've got two Oscar medals in, the, yeah. in all Ireland. It's, it's just incredible. It is when you when you win like that, when you win Ulster titles, and of course the All Ireland today. For all those years, did you think a day like this would ever come? I was supposed. You always dream of a day for like us here. Um, since a kid, it's your dream to play in an All-Ireland final and to, to win an All-Ireland. For it to finally come through today is just brilliant. Even To wait the 10 years makes it even more special. And Rory, obviously you would echo those sentiments, having been there yourself, like Colin, for all those years. Yeah, listen, Michael, we, we, we soldiered for a long time, you know, um, 10 years, and I suppose we never dreamed of this. Um, Jim came in there with Rory a couple of years ago, and. Um, he believed in us in fairness, he totally transformed the, the squad and, and, and the players' mentality and uh, thankfully, thankfully we got our uh, reward today. So Rory, is that what made the difference to you the last two years? Because let's face it, a lot of people around the country thought that some of you lads weren't taking this thing too seriously. Nah, <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, Donegal <laughs> had a reputation for partying? <laughs> Whoa. That's a big comment there, that's a big comment. Now listen, um, myself and Colm came in the tail end of that sort of uh, experience, shall we call it. But anyway, listen, we're just delighted that someone like Jim and Rory came in and, and, and really got us focusing and believing again. And, you know, we inherited a group of players there from under 21s who were used to winning things and, and they came in and it was like a, a new spring of life for the rest of us and you know that got, gave us the, the shot in the arm that we needed and, and thankfully you know today we, we, we got our reward and it's just unbelievable. Colm I have to ask you about that uh, goal you scored, Michael Murphy's first goal was a real bullet of a shot, you had to be alert for the second goal of course because it came back off the post. Yeah well, I think Michael's goal gave us the, the dream start that we wanted and uh, I think it's kind of a trademark of Michael's now catching that ball and around the square and rattling the net like so. And then the second goal, I suppose, I was admiring the good move and I thought it was a good score. Next thing I came back off the post and thankfully it fell nicely for me and it gave us a good start. Any plans for the rest of the week? Ah, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll enjoy tonight, I know, and uh, we'll take Sam back to Donegal tomorrow and we'll take it from there. Well, that's. The two of you have been two fantastic soldiers for Donegal football for the last 10 years. Congratulations to the two of you very much. Uh, Rory Cavan and Colin McFadden. Days, we have one more visit to pay to the Burlington Hotel a little bit later on. That's for the announcement of the man of the match from this year's final. Very important announcement indeed. Thanks for that, Michael. And uh, Martin just making the point that it was great that the senior lads being acknowledged there for all they've done. We've lots more to come in the programme, including Team of the Year. But now it's time to get reaction to the minor final. It was a repeat of the Leinster final when Dublin won easily against Mead. Could there be an upset today? Let's find out from Porrick Lodge.
When Dublin and Meath met in the Leinster final earlier in the season, there was a 12-point win for Dublin, but there was a general expectation of a closer game today. Niall Walsh's fourth-minute equaliser tying up the game at one point each. Desi Farrell's Dublin team registered some top quality scores. Eric Lowndes giving Dublin a three points to one lead. Eight minutes in, great score on the left wing by the wing back. James McEntee was being effectively deployed as a sweeper for Meath, but at the other end they were finding scores hard to come by. Killian O'Sullivan's effort to one of only two points they scored in the opening half. As Dublin established control of the game, they could have been in for a goal. Nave Marnog midfielder Shane Carthy had a chance of a goal, but he had the presence of mind to fist over a point. His initial shot blocked down, but he's still got a point for his effort. Dual star Cormac Costello brought an end to the first half scoring as Dublin led at half time by seven points to two. Substitute Paddy Canelli's early score in the second half gave Meath a slight glimmer of hope. And their comeback aspirations were boosted significantly 12 minutes after the restart when they were awarded a penalty. It was a fairly clear cut call for the Derry referee Barry Cassidy to make. It takes a brave man to step up to take a penalty in an All Ireland final and fake reward was coolness personified. Right now, Dublin's lead was down to a point. But it was actually Dublin who raised their game from here on. Niall Walsh with an outstanding score to rally the troops. Cormac Costello played a key role in the build up here, with Niall Scully finishing the job. Enterprising teamwork to the fore as Dublin led by 11 points to 1 4. Substitute David Campbell rounded off the scoring as Dublin at their ease registered a first minor title in 28 years. Dublin 14 points, Meath 1 5. Optimistic signs for the future in the capital. It's been fantastic, unreal, you know, we've worked so hard all season, like serious dedication has gone in with this team and, you know, we've been lucky, we've got the result at the end of it and so happy, over the moon right now. We wanted to be in touching distance with maybe 10 minutes to go, we got down to a point maybe with, what, 13 or 14 minutes to go, but in all fairness, Dublin responded very well and I suppose people would have, would have questioned their character or, or bottle or whatever you want to call it, but, but they showed, they showed uh, what a decent team they are. Yeah, they certainly did. I, I was a bit taken aback to be reminded, it's 28 years, Martin, since Dublin won a minor title. They were pipped last year, they've won it this year. There's a bit of conveyor belt perhaps starting in Dublin football. They are dead and um, they won the under-21 this year as well. And I mean, that minor team probably powered most teams they played. Very impressive. And Cormac Costello, I think he's played in five minor finals and it's the first one he's won between Hurling and, and football. And he's an exceptional talent, talent coming through. And just Kieran's after saying he's a lovely young lad as well, you know. I think maybe they should be should maybe split Dublin into four for the minor minor competitions. There'll be more players coming yeah, through. To give the, to give oh, the rest were, the country a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Friday and Be Spinter. neutral, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, well, look, at in fairness to me, they had been well beaten in the Leinster final and they set up to try and counter that yeah, I suppose that's, they, had, they had to change. They'd lost by 12 points in, in, in the Leinster final and the talk during the week was that they were going to develop a defensive programme. Uh, as I said, similar to the way Tony Gall played last year. I was joking with Martin earlier on. Uh, but it's a very difficult system to, uh, to, uh, to implement uh, in the space of a few weeks. Uh, Dublin had, had coasted through everybody. You know, Kerry were, were the close team, got within eight points. And... They made life difficult for Dublin at times, you know, but Dublin stayed patient and, you know, they, they've, they've kind of coasted through this championship, a phenomenal collective team and uh, very happy for Desi Farrell after, particularly last year, that sucker punch to Tipperary in the, in, in, in the last minute to come back with this group of players. He's invested a lot of time with them through the development squads and down through the years. But, you know, it was all Meath could really do today. 